spectrum we need which need to meet the demand for the mobile broadband by 2020 and maybe some uh, proposal or suggestion that supporting strategy we see that can be you know, used in relation to overcome this problem then maybe we have a uh, question and answer okay as a start maybe i like to introduce about our center basically our center was established in back in 2003 by at that time we been uh, have several funding from the government agency for example mosti ministry of science and also from the ministry of uh, education and even the mtdc yeah? uh, because we have some product that we produce from our center and we commercialize it through a speak of company that supported by the uh, mtdc i think uh, also i want to highlight that we also have a collaboration with mcmc in 2011 to 2014 and during that time i think we managed to have several labs uh, including 4G labs uh, and also the uh, specific of the Shenrik SAR lab and WIE web to measure the radiation from the base station and so on so i think with that we would like to thank uh, MCMC for supporting our center to be able to and uh, with that uh, the our achievement and what we have achieved uh, ministry of higher education has opened the center of excellence in malaysia from different university to apply for the status of high school e so i think we uh, apply for that because they will be based on five years track record of our center so if we meet certain uh, level then we will be can be recognized as high school e and they give us some funding and i think uh, this high school e also they give us a niche area 
need to focus. So we managed to secure that status of high school in end of 2014, but they give us to look into the 5G. So that's why now we are looking into the, our research mostly on the related to the 5G. And I think why we do this research also, because we know 5G will happen by 2020. And before that, we have, you know, from now to 2020, <laughs> we're talking about mobile broadband is one of the things that will be, you know, uh, enhanced and so on. So we want to study before 2020 that 5G coming, what happened or what are the requirements huh, that they need here. Uh, in term, especially also something related to type of spectrum, because spectrum is related to the demand for mobile broadband huh, requirement. And uh, yeah, for your information, we have both locations in Kuala Lumpur and also in Johor. Uh, I think starting last two years, we have four other uh, the center, uh, branch center in UTMKL. Okay, I think I think most of us know that ICT is a very key driving force for the digital economic growth in Malaysia. I think if you we can say that some some from the literature review measure that twenty percent increase in the ICT investment will result in 1.4% GDP growth in Malaysia. That means it's very important. And uh, related to mobile broadband, of course, mobile broadband, you can have a, uh, what you call a mobile device connected to the high-speed internet position. And this can only be done when talking about mobile broadband is through 3G and 4G, and we which are capable to meet that. And uh, of course, this will further enhance in when 5G is coming. So, this, so before I move further, I would like to share with you the what are the evolution of 3G and 4G. So, if we look back here, basically, first generation started 1980s. Before that, we call mobile radio telephony. I think mobile radio telephony started back in 1946. When you say mobile radio telephony means your mobile be connected with the fix. You can make call and receive a call. But uh, it took about more than three years before it be revolutionized where the cellular system be introduced. Cellular system introduced in first generation in 1980s. It took about 30 years because one thing because of spectrum issue, so we cannot reuse the spectrum and so on. When the cellular come in, then we can have cellular concept frequency use, self fitting then it becomes you know, very important. And first generation, you can see only for voice. There's no data there. And long system. You move to second generation, after 10 years, then the digital system, where you have 2G. But even 2G at that time, you have voice and low data rate. You're talking about DPRS, 100 kilobit per second. You're talking about uh, age, maybe 3 and 4 kilobit per second. Then when you move further to 3D, then this is where the foundation of broadband start, huh? where, uh, started at, we're talking about 2 megabit, WCDMA, 3G. They improve further to uh, HSPA, say 14 megabit, HSPA plus, huh? 28 by applying some technique, huh? modulation, and so by more in there. And we move further to 4G, enhance further 200 megabit and when you're talking about 4G, the true 4G means is LTEA. Yeah? Uh, from uh, FDMA to TDMA to WCDMA to OFDMA, those are the technology being uh, used to increase further the efficiency, to make sure that the spectrum that you have can be utilized more. Yeah? That's why they have to change the technology and so on. So you see 3G, 2G, 3G, 4G more to enhance the problem, increase that. So the next thing coming is the 5G. <coughs> so you see the 5G as a machine will be further enhanced the broadband. But not beside only enhanced. The 5G are talking about other use cases as well. Eh? Example, uh, low latency means you can do remote surgery, you can do autonomous car, and it also incorporate IoT, become what part of it, because you can see there will be massive productivity of IoT. And those things happen, interestingly, every 10 years. Starting when the cellular introduced in 18 to 90, 2000, 2010, and coming to 2020. Before I move to the 
measurement and all continue. I just to share with you about what is the vision of, of the vision of 5G. This 5G called evolution and revolution because it enhances further the broadband. LTE advance or in IP term they call IMT advance can support one gigabit. To get one gigabit, you need 100 megahertz of bandwidth. You need eight by eight by more at the base station. Okay, you have to do amplification. And uh, to move further to 5G, it, the minimum or the requirement in IMT 2020 for 5G is 10 gigabit. So this is the requirement. So this is one thing. Another thing is that in 5G you're looking into IoT. Things are, uh, this become a standard. And IoT means things are surrounding us are connected to internet. You need a capacity. You need more capacity. That means you need to have that. Another one is the low latency. Okay, so with that, I think we are looking into this features. They are looking the vision and uh, the requirement 5D, all machines, uh, human things, wirelessly connected by 2020. If you can see in this diagram that, uh, that they were talking about 25 billion connection, which means our population is only 6 billion world population which means surrounding us two third are things connected to the internet. So we need to have capacity. There will be massive connectivity. Second, download, uh, enhance the broadband. This is the thing that you are looking at. Because if from the 41 gigabit, theoretically to 10 gigabit. Okay, so that if this will further enhance. For example, fit wireless access will become very important also in 5G because you can have, imagine 10 gigabit, no, uh, connection to point to multi point and so on. That can be supported by 5G. Latency is uh, 1 millisecond. 4G, you can have maybe 10 milliseconds or uh, maximum is uh, 10 milliseconds, minimum is 10 milliseconds. Eh? That's why you can do voice over IP. 3G, you cannot, you have to do voice, go to circuit switch, data, go to packet. But when you get to 5G, since the latency reduced to 10 milliseconds, then you can have boss over IP. That's why now they can use boss over LTE. Because 10 milliseconds, your ears can tolerate the delay. More than that, you, know, you have to go to circuit switch. But when you're talking about 5G, you're looking into one millisecond. So one millisecond means there are some critical mm -hmm. mission. For example, I give you here, this video showing, uh, with one millisecond, you can have what we call a remote surgery. Doctor can be anywhere. Robot is operating, but it's one millisecond means like zero distance. Okay, so this is the thing. Autonomous car, for example, you're looking into if you're traveling 100 <laughs> kilometers per hour. Uh, by 4G, maybe with the latency, it think about 1.4 meters or more before you can apply the brake. But with uh, 5G, one millisecond, 2.5 centimeter, which means we still we still can have that. So this is just an example. Okay, beside the enhanced broadband, beside massive connectivity because of the capacity, these are other uh, things that can be applied in the uh, 5G application. Okay? So I think... Uh, okay, I'll move to the, to the next slide. Okay, uh, now back to what we are studying the related to our what we are I think we have to see the first part we want to study about mobile broadband perspective uh, toward 2020. We have to look into what is the current. We are not doing any benchmarking or anything, just to try to understand what are the mobile broadband. First, we are talking about two types of service testing we will do in the, this test. One, we are talking about web browsing. This is money. The second one is the uh, video streaming. These are two things that we are that we do in the in bring the drive test. We using three operators because uh, we choose the three operators that have a widest coverage that to represent that. And we are talking about a uh, four mobile broadband performance metric. For example, we're talking about coverage. Coverage is very important. That will give you how well the, we can assess the new. Latency is also important because how latency means the round trip from the user to back to here. How, how this this what we call latency when you see in the 5G just now one millisecond. Uh, in 4G, 10 milliseconds and so on. 
Now we want to see what is the latency that we have in the current uh, 4G, uh, 3G, 4G networks. Okay, speed, of course, we have to know what the speed and also the uh, certification. <coughs> We're looking into five morpho uh, morphologies. We are talking about tents, urban, we are talking about urban, suburban, and rural and indoor. So the KPI or the measurement that we have done for this, we're looking into as measured signal strength for that. that will determine the coverage. How good is the coverage from the base station? In terms of the web browsing or web testing, we are we are looking into what is the page download speed. It's one page of this. What is the download speed they will experience? We look into the response time. This is the latency. How how fast is the response time to download the one? one page and also average page display and also the ping. So these are important criteria or KPI required when you're looking into the uh, browsing. And also for the speed test, the same thing, the signal strength is important to determine the coverage. We're looking into also the VMOS, it's like the horse also, but here is a video to see the score. The higher is better. And the rest of that we are looking into average video, downloading speed, and all those buffering, latency, ping, and so on. So these are the criteria of KPI we are looking at. I will show you some results. Most details of the results are available in the white paper, but I just highlighting some of the snapshots that we have. But okay. For example, we are looking, because we are doing two, four, four areas. Huh? One is Klang Valley and Kuala Lumpur, uh, Slum Mall. And we also do Johor, we also do Sabah and Sarawak. So based on these three, uh, four locations there, and we do a web, uh, what you call the web browsing and video streaming. Uh, if you can see based on the one that I mentioned to you, the KPI, the, the best performance that we have seen with OG uh, performance here is in club weight. Okay, based on that. The detailed result is available in the, in the white paper. Okay, just to share you something that we have an author. Second, we want to share here related to the measurement that we obtain in terms of 4G network performance. We see we are looking into two tests. One is web browsing and one is video streaming. Of course, 4G much better. I think theoretically, so you can see that it have 2.5 from our our measurement. We have found out that 2.5 is faster web only compared 4G. And 3D. And in terms of video, uh, video uh, download latency also, I think 4G is much better than 3D. In all cases, in all locations, in Klang Valley, Slamo, in Doho, and also in Sabah and Sarawak. And another uh, snapshot that we want to share here is regarding the performance, comparing West and East Malaysia. West Malaysia and East Malaysia, meaning that in terms of web routing, of course the West Malaysia here is much better than the East Malaysia based on the result that we have. And again also for the VMOS, uh, VMOS means the quality, the, the, you know, the video that you are taking, the score is higher in the, uh, the Club Valley, uh, sorry, the West Malaysia compared to East Malaysia. And also we have a percentage of 4G attempt. This is considering 4G. We divide into these five <coughs> methodologies, uh, indoor, rural, suburban, and so on. But of course, we can see that the good coverage of 4G is in the dense area. That's why we... Uh, the area that in rural area, for example, we don't have much thing because maybe not much 4G coverage over there. Some of the coverage might be go to 3G. Or I think 2G we don't consider as early because it's too because some operators claim that 2G like no service in the broadband. Okay, but well, why considering 3G and 4G? So this is one of the so Slamo, Club Valley results show consistent from performance with the 4G. There is some gap huh, between West Malaysia and East Malaysia, and the last stretch of the area in rural Malaysia and East Malaysia are not so by 3G. But mostly they still have 2G, which not. Okay, so that is one of the our finding that we you know, can share in the white paper uh, related to that. Okay, this one we are talking about uh, performance in the suburban uh, is better than urban and dense 
a bird. If you see that, if you take three daily, a bird, suck a bird, and dance a bird. Performance of 4G here, you can see that is uh, in a bird, dance a bird has less performance. Why, why, why that happen? It's because of the congestion. In some bird, uh, dance area, you have so many users. Yeah, it's congested. And you can see the demand in uh, in suburban maybe less user uh, which can accept. That means you can see that the suburban much better than the desert bird. This is due to the congestion, due to the density, the high density that people accessing the broadband. Uh, it's not and uh, said apply to the video quality as well. And also indoor coverage basically less like, can be further and if you, we compare between 3G and 4G, the indoor coverage of 3G is better than 4G. <coughs> One thing 4G, you see that they will be here and currently most of the 4G are using 2.6 higher frequency compared to 3G which is 2 gigahertz, huh? 2.1. 2.6 higher band means more loss. That means if we have the same uh, base station, same height, same power compared to 3G and 4G, 4G will have smaller coverage compared to the 3G because of the path loss right? because the path loss depends on two one distance and the other one is frequency higher frequency go more loss small set right? with, the, with the same distance and so on another thing is also indoor maybe the penetration into the building will be higher compared to the because at the moment mainly we are talking about business mainly from outside they have to penetrate into the building Higher frequency maybe have more loss <coughs> to the to the building and so on. So this is the that's why we say that the indoor coverage at certain building can further be enhanced by having distributed antenna system for example, by having a small inside the building and so on. So this is the sum of the finding that we have. Just to get the feeling, we are not do benchmarking, we are not do that's why we don't measure this. But we want to see what are the status of current uh, the requirement that uh, we we'll see for the next. So uh, the second part of the our white paper is to, talking about the estimation of spectrum requirement. We want to see uh, what will be the 2020. Whether the spectrum now, what, what you have the spectrum now all below 6 gigahertz. Okay, some of that. Whether that spectrum is enough or how to meet the demand. How we forecast that? Through our study and forecast, some models that we developed uh, in WCC, we have found that by 2020, you need at least 307 megahertz spectrum more to meet the demand for the mobile broadband by 2020. Why I say that? If you see some of the study done by some of the, thing, like from here, uh, the recent mentioned that in uh, Southeast Asia, there will be by 2020, 14 times increase in the broadband, mobile broadband. In Asia Pacific, 11 times. Worldwide, globally, it's 10 times, which means it's okay. Even the uh, Cisco has also have done a study in Asia Pacific, which has to be close to nine times, huh? and also uh, globally, eight times. Which means, if you see here, the data, the mobile data is exponentially increased. The voice you can see from there, they will be just because voice you can use data for voice, for example, WhatsApp call, uh, streaming, uh, what you call Skype, and so on. Uh, so demand for that, which means the exponential increase of the requirement for data will be you not know, increased. So that we need a spectrum. We need more bandwidth for the to, to meet for that requirement. Why this happen? Because you can see nowadays. New portable device become cheaper and more device of smartphone and so on. Even now, people in rural areas start using smartphone. Uh, and two, maybe two gigabyte of data plan is you know, they are looking more. So you can see the uh, increasing on that, growing of the video traffic by like YouTube and so on become that, and increase mobile apps. Uh, all those uh, they, they want to be on the move and on the screen, yeah? increase in the mobile internet and so on. And again, you can see that part of these things which are all uploaded. Those are the contribute to 
contribution demand for the increase in the data. Also, more social network access by mobile. Okay, you want to be anywhere to access and, and so on. You will, the user experience become new because the speed is still increasing. Before you say two megabits enough and so on, but as time is going on, you experience and then you need more. <coughs> and there will be a cost per bit will be going down. And so on, okay? And you can see that the age and that product. Now the small children also. You give them, they can open YouTube and see. It. And when they travel in the highway, they slow, you see, you say, oh, internet slow. So something like that. Huh? And old people, you can see, oh, they, they are retired. They don't have to, nothing to do. Just, you can WhatsApp, you have to WhatsApp group and everything there. So demand all increase, instead of further. So this, this contribute to the, what you call, uh, so true. Yeah. <laughs> the data, right, for, for that. And I think with that, we can see how we want to estimate how much spectrum that we need quite quickly to, to based on the based on the report from GSMA uh, from all those uh, others uh, researchers they have done so we, we will see that we, that's why we initiate motivate us to do some study because one of the things why we need to do is that since we are given the status of high CUE by Ministry of Higher Education 5G and 5G meaning you are talking about enhanced broadband further. So part of it, uh, 5G will be happen 2030. There will be new spectrum. Uh, there will be more bandwidth available. But before that, we need to study whether the existing bandwidth because 5G also might be also require low band. Uh, so those are that. So with this, we have a forecasting spectrum model developed uh, uh, in, by our researcher as an uh, academic side that we based on the input and all those things. We, by having this input parameter, such as site number growth, uh, mobile data traffic growth, and all those average network utilization spectrum efficiency growth, current availability spectrum that we consider on this, then we come up from this model. I, want, I don't want to go in detail on this, but if you want to have more detail, we have to have a separate session, especially with the spectrum group. They might no need more detail on this part. But here I giving you it's just a general. <coughs> but we can arrange another time uh, to discuss more detail how this uh, prediction or model works uh, to, to estimate that. Okay, based on those information, this uh, is quite complicated. You have to go through all this. Huh? Because this model we are going through, because usually uh, other countries also have, but they are using different model. The problem is we cannot use the other model because we don't know what parameter. Not like, for example, FCC they have other, they, like Singapore they also have done with other different, but the parameter they use, we use based on what existing uh, parameter that we can gather to come up with that. So that's why we cannot apply their models. So this is one of the academic exercises that we are doing but, uh, uh, on to calculate that part. But of course, we also validate or compare with other models to see the validity of the, what we propose there. Prof, ada compare juga dengan model lain macam JSMB. JSMB punya satu model ke? Jadi? Uh, JSMB pun ada. JSMB. Uh, yeah, yeah, they, they have the but but something parameter that they use we we cannot get we, we cannot input but we methodology is the same so we are we are based on whatever as we what for for example from MC, 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 from GSMB data like connection and so on then based on that we try to come up with that so but but that is will be a very detailed bit on this part maybe I think on the spectrum group maybe we can have some discussion on this one, how then maybe you can have some input on that part. So anyway, with this uh, model, or with this uh, proposed forecasting model, this is called, because we don't know what 2020, we have to focus. Uh, uh, what will be the, how much spectrum required? Based on that, we'll find out that uh, the, we require about five, uh, 957 megahertz. <coughs> Right? But uh, that is the requirement for spectrum. But the existing spectrum already they have is six five zero, which means there is a additional spectrum around 
307 megahertz is required if you want to meet the demand for mobile uh, in 2020. 307 megahertz, that been required, is required with them. So uh, if you want to compare with other neighboring country, they also have some religion, but they're doing different. Uh, we don't know how the methodology they use, they are basing at the uh, specific way. But anyway, the result obtained from them, uh, what they have is not far from what we are having. For example, in uh, Singapore, I think they are, uh, the, the current spectrum is 450. Uh, they, they delete the uh, this uh, previous uh, spectrum of 900 megahertz. Uh, there is a sub spectrum gap of here, uh, 900, uh, 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 400, 900 minus 450. That is the requirement for the Singapore. The same, same as in Thailand. Okay, and also we have in Indonesia. So this we are comparing, but we cannot compare apple to apple because they are different but we can give some indication showing that is them it's not only in Malaysia but everywhere but even we, we, we must maybe we have uh, not, uh, some indication that we are also consistent with what we have taken uh, from different methods. okay I think uh, from the spectrum care analysis as I mentioned to you if you see this diagram, we need to have 307 megahertz. And uh, from the WRC 15, what we understand that uh, there are 700 megahertz available. That this is a digit the broadcast band. But in Malaysia later, maybe there will be a digital dividend. There will be analog. It's closed down. I'm not sure. Maybe by this <coughs> month, maybe next year. When the, then there will be spectrum available there. Maybe allocated for their name which where we can obtain there about 90 megahertz maybe we estimate that, uh, that in 2018 and there is another spectrum 1400 okay that are also available for 40. if you look here there are about 130 megahertz of new spectrum that can be obtained from this potential here i don't mention about 350 because uh, 3.5 gigahertz, but that is also important for band to protect the satellite. As we know, the satellite here is very important due to the effect of the weather in the uh, higher band. Then they are most rely on the sea band and the fact that there will be an adjacent channel and so on. By the front and so on. Okay, so this is only that the required part. Maybe we have other. In the usage uh, application, just like uh, no machine to machine and other. Okay, so these are the thing that we are looking at. Uh, maybe you are talking about one seven seven megahertz uh, requirement uh, that can need to further require to meet if you want to uh, see the forecast that the mobile broadband requirement in twenty twenty. So I think this is what uh, we we know that the current spectrum allocated yeah, uh, we see 160 bigger for all the operators and this is the one that I mentioned to you is 700 bigger when the t digital TV is being fully utilized used and there is no analog to be closed down then there will be about 90 bigger spectrum available and there will be also maybe I don't know uh, just uh, in that there is another spectrum that 1400, as I already mentioned just now, around 140. There are additional of 130. That's why we are predicting that 177 megahertz more is required uh, in this case. Therefore, uh, we can see that how we want to resolve the spectrum crunch challenge here. This is just a uh, proposal only. They're talking about we have to speed up allocation of more spectrum, which means that. Of course, uh, when thinking about speed up means maybe you are looking into potential band of uh, 700 and also 1400. More incentive the government to push uh, mobile broadband as a development. Okay, maybe we have to target because uh, according to the targeted KPI for the national broadband services, uh, maybe I think we have some for some reference that the requirement is 100 megabit broadband made available to all households in capitals and also in high impact areas and they are looking into 20 megabit 
second broadband mobile uh, make available at least 50% of the suburban and rural area. Okay, so maybe uh, these are the things. And wireless broadband has, can be also complement the fix. In future, of course, we are talking about 5G future when we have 10 gig, uh, gigabit of uh, uh, speed, uh, you can obtain that you can also utilize as a big wireless access to uh, provide the mobile broadband. Uh. And uh, basically, we are talking about the new work is a future like, I don't know, maybe uh, because what a way to get more besides spectrum, uh, not only spectrum to get that. If you can have more base station, you mean the cell becomes smaller. Then you can reuse the same frequency again, much again, then you can also elevate or maybe overcome that sort of, uh, you know, the shortage by having. And you see that there are a lot of lamp posts around it. So you can utilize that as a and a small cell that might also help us to improve further. And also we are talking about input sharing and so on. But I think most important now they are looking into the uh, license assisted access, LLA, where they, you, you can also utilize the, what you call the unlicensed band for the LTE, for example. You can use the license and unlicensed. Because of course the unlicensed band you will see that if there is some, uh, there is like connective radio sort of thing, when there is need, they will be moving. If there is not used, you can use that. That can also overcome that sort of uh, shortage huh, that we are talking about. And if you, if you can see here, maybe you have to share here. So this is why I am uh, spraying just now below six. We are talking now below six gigahertz. We have 2G, 3G, 4G, 900, 1800, 850, 900, 1800. 2.1, 2.6. Maybe in future there will be 2.3 of the farming right? uh, to uh, 4G and so on from the YMAC. And if we, if you can see that spectral efficiency, the technology, we have 2G, 3G, 4G, <coughs> and 4G. Even now they, they're talking about 2G is no problem. If you have 2G service, they don't consider this. They consider no service. That's why I understand from some of 3G and 4G, but no spectrum in 2G, if you can, uh, they can use this 2G, can be used the 3G of, or even 4G, is, that can one of the ways to go. Lower band, as I mentioned to you earlier, that very important because coverage. Why uh, 850, for example, 850 you implement LTE. It's good because coverage is bigger. That's why I think uh, the service program getting or uh, lesser for them because their obligation broadband to rural area because the coverage. Which uh, I mentioned to you the same high, same power. You're talking about lower band compared to high band. Maybe uh, you need maybe some, for example, even between 900 and 1800 number of base station required. So, for example, you want to cover one to give a service area. We are talking about same height, same power. Using higher band, let's say double the frequency in 100, you, you might require twice the number of base stations compared to the low band. Which means your infrastructure cost will be uh, lower, but you can cover what the area. That's why lower band is very important. Even 700 is very important. Because 700 even can go further. Okay? Because uh, if you have, because LTE basically can support multi band. If, if you have three gigahertz, you can do it. you can sell FTE because FTE using sub carrier. You can have even one point four. Say I just give an example: an operator having a spectrum from the MCMC or even the one point four megahertz, they can implement LTE service. The only thing the resource they have is smaller. The, the, the capacity will be lower, but they can still because your phone, you only can support that. Uh, compared to 1.4, 3, 5, 10, 15, up to 20. That's why when you move to 4G, LTEA, 38 ones, it's true 4G. That can say that 1 gigabit. You know, to get 1 gigabit of speed, you need to have 100 megahertz of bandwidth. You have to get 100 megahertz in one point. You get, need to have 8 by 8 my more. That means your base station there have to have 8 in the other. That's why when it comes to LTE, they have to do carrier aggregation. You can aggregate. 
LTE support only 20 megahertz. If you can aggregate four, uh, five of 20 megahertz, you can have 100 megahertz. With 100 megahertz, you can have 100 gigabit, uh, one gigabit. And they can be interband or intraband or interband. Meaning that intraband means if you are 20, we have 20, 20, you can aggregate together. Or it can be interband, 2.6 and 1800. Combined to get more data. Okay? So this is how they use to get more, because that's why you need more babies to get more speed or more capacity or even more speed. That's uh, that where, where we can, that you have to do care aggregation. There's no apply for that part. Kenapa ada tak ada recommendations on how to allocate the spectrum and how to aggregate the spectrum, how to use it? Yeah. Would that be something that you want to? Yeah. I I, I think what I understand from regulator, their technology is dependent. Is up to the I don't know if it's settled or it's moving. Hasil <laughs> moving more more because uh, this is a uh, no is it maybe you the you know the the farming recently in July. Uh, 900 megahertz, you have four operator right here. Uh, U-Mobile, uh, UG. They, U-Mobile have five megahertz. Like you see this, uh, I don't know, from, from this uh, previous chart. Okay. U-Mobile have five megahertz. Before this, U-Mobile don't have any 900 megahertz. They only have three G, three, one, four, one. GG, before they have two, now they have five. Cellcom have 10, Macy's have 10. Okay, because all of them can implement a PFI. Five, five, five megahertz is enough for them. So for them, as a newcomer, they can, I think, what I understand, maybe DG only, instead of just applying the GSM in the 900, you better you use 4G, you use LTE. Because LTE can support. If you see the efficiency here, the graph down there, with the same spectrum, efficiency means if you have the same baby there, if you use 2G compared to 4G, 4G can provide more capacity. Even theoretically, they calculate that 30 times more. So this is, if you have 2G, that's why one of the way how to really is to refund. I mean, changing from 2G to 4G. Yeah, okay. yes. say, say we jump in. The number, 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 and then they juggle semua you know, orang big access to the would that be would that get you more than the, nearer to the 307 okay i think if you for example if you see i think uh, here is more on you see here yeah, 4g of course not already for the 850 bb or tm they have five they have the cost of the uh, five megahertz then you're talking about 900 2g currently 2G, 2, uh, GSM, 200, uh, but if you do, you can check this, uh, you, you can still live, because uh, you only have one channel, 200, bigger, uh, 200 mm, kilohertz, there's some part of channel, because if you have 1.4 or 3 or 5, you can use it, you can plan LTE, because this 1.4, if you compare, if you in 2G and 3, 4G, 4G can support more capacity, more user. I mean, efficiency, Spectrum efficiency important. One is to get more babies. Support. The second is spectral efficiency. If you have the same resource, but you can have more than you will be. So that's why I think looking the future, there will be some application need still need GSM, still need the need. But you can still maintain that. But some part of the channel can be reformed or can be you not know, used for that. Even you're talking about uh, 2G, you have two, two here 980. Even the 1900, we have four operators also there. Okay, then we have a 3G. 3G is using 200, 2000 megahertz. Uh, it's a four operator there. And then we have 4G, which is, uh, when we're talking 4G, is here 2.6. For 2.6, we have so many operators there. About mm -hmm. eight operators, huh? post FDD. Because the beauty of LTE means they not only support FDD, they can be FDD and GDD. You can even you now I understand that some things three DBP they can aggregate between FDD and TDD. And in two point three they're currently being used by what mac huh? But I think uh, the operator having the two point three, they're also having two 
0.6 TDD In future when they want to, they can do aggregation They can aggregate 2.6 and 2.3 TDD together To get more spectrum Okay, so we can see those are the spectrum that available below 6 bigger That's 2G, 3G, 4G So how you want to, you know, that's why what, what we are talking just now is based on what we have But one the way is to Refound To change from to some country I don't know Mr. Tool Singapore that means 2G they are They are moving to that This is the way that uh, Okay, so, so those are the, the things that can be you know, put into that That's why when it comes to 5G okay, 5G is more That's why first they are looking into above 6 <coughs> And then when further we come, they zoom into to 24 to 86 huh? uh, The figure WRC 15 Why they have to do that? Because capacity means no, According to Shannon law, capacity only based on 3 why you need more bandwidth? You get more capacity, you need more bandwidth. That's why LTE to LTA have to do carrier aggregation. LTE support 20. LTA need 100. Where to get 100? That's why carrier aggregation happens. They can aggregate number of into that. Because we need this. Second thing, we need to have good signal to noise ratio. Meaning that you must be always to the close to the base station. Then you can have the capacity. That's why small cell. One way in the way to increase the cell, the cell becomes smaller. When you have smaller interference reduced, you can use the same channel again very close. When you say again very close, then you can increase the capacity. This is the way that how you want to get back. And another thing is multiple antenna. That's why my more kind. You know uh, HSPA to HP plus in 3G. You have WCDMA, it's 2 megabit for engineering that Then 3GBP improve further to uh, 14 megabit because changing the modulation and so on And to get then to 28 gigabit, what they do? They apply MIMO Two antenna MIMO means like what you see in Wi-Fi, some there are two antenna come out there This is MIMO MIMO means multiple input, multiple output <coughs> Input means your transmitter into the air, this is input Output from the air into your If you have two antenna, input, output, this is what you call CISO Single input, single output If you have diversity, two antenna, output and MISO If you have one, two receiver, is CIMO If you have more than two here, is MIMO That's why they call MIMO Multiple input, multiple output Okay, and then in the LTE, they have their four LTE 4x4 four four in base station Four antenna LTEA, you get one gigabit beside more spectrum, 100 megahertz You need to have eight by five. 5G, you are looking to what? Because they are talking about basic point more 64 by 64 But the issue is that in 5G, no issue because frequency is higher when the frequency higher with friends smaller, your antenna size is small. That's why we can get this guy. Okay, so we need three these three things. That's why when you talking talking about 5G, there is no more spectrum below that they are looking to here. Before they are talking about above six. Now they are talking about 24 to 86 here. But I think WRC 15 the site uh, no, they are involved in NPWG in World World Radio Conference 19 they will decide. But most potential band that we the most worldwide is using is 28 for 5G. You, you, you know that in Korea there will be a pilot trial in 2018, Winter Olympic. Huh? They were there. But in the commercial first commercial it will be in in, in uh, Tokyo, uh, maybe uh, 2020 to demonstrate first 5G. That one they also be using 28. But those spectrum there will be. Uh, final event in World Radio Conference 2019 for the 5G. So you see, they have to move here. And again, interesting in 5G, not only that. See, the beam is focusing to the user. <coughs> beam for me. Uh, you can see, uh, no, the difference. You can see here, for example, that you will follow the user. 
radius only 200 meter. So this is the what will happen right? to, to cater for the what you call the the, the capacity requirement. Not this spectrum. So. Professor, if to deploy by the the cost of equipment will be more expensive than deploy 4G or not? The investment for health will be increasing. You mean for 5G? Yeah. Going forward. We don't know yet because I think for sure by after 2020, when the uh, human available and all those <coughs> things, of course, will be. But 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 uh, I'm not sure. But of course, you, you, you can see that cost all, all will be going down. That's why they require standard. They require even now, uh, manufacturer A have because I basically I do in 5G. They set the requirement, the vision, that is into back in 2013, in the working party 5D. First thing, when the first meeting, uh, I think in Vietnam also, they start working on that. The vision, they said, they have the vision. Vision there, one thing, enhance the broadband. From one gigabit to 10 gigabit. Second thing, they're talking about literacy, to reduce further. From 10 millisecond, for example, in LTEA, to one millisecond. What they are talking about, not only broadband, they're talking about other use cases, remote surgery, talking about car without driver. You need to have very low, zero distance, low latency. And now you're talking about things uh, are connected. Nowadays, there is no standard for the word they use LoRa, they use SIGPOM as that. But now 3GPP, look that they have come up with narrowband IoT. This is a step toward 5G, basically. Narrowband IoT means things connected to the internet, you can use what you call uh, some part of the spectrum. They only require very narrow band. Which means mean narrow band means the range can be extended. They remove all the function that don't require. Like your mobile phone is always trust me up there with battery. The battery can be they're talking about ten years. Put that ten years, don't worry about that thing. They go to sleep for the time they wake up and send and so on. And the uh, important thing because it's a licensed band. Lesson band, there is no issue of <coughs> interference. Because if you use unlicensed band like LoRa and all those things, imagine you will have a. Uh, because they will be massive uh, agriculture or building or using that. Of for sure, for some some there will be some interference. But if you're using the narrow band IoT, it's already licensed. Only the infrastructure will be provided by the service provider. They have to upgrade the base station to do to be able to do that. So you don't have to worry to have to set up another load infrastructure. Uh, Lora you need gateway. Yeah? And then if you are talking about covering many areas and so on, then maybe the because it's uncontrolled, anybody can come in. But if you use the license man, it's really you not know, like what using the, the phone and so on. Second thing maybe in terms of security, it's already so this are the, this is why the release 13, 3 GPP coming to introduce normal narrow band IoT. And this is the next step. Release 16, 17 will be 5G in the wider level. Okay, so this is just an example. This is why you see 5G is the evolution in, in incorporating other standards as well. It becomes a global standard. You mean global standard means mass production cost will be going down then right, and so on. Any and countries, uh, how much the cost? I'm not sure. Yeah, yeah. Sorry. Any countries uh, have started embarking on 5G right now? No, usually if, if some people say that I have 5G, it's will be like that. <laughs> 5G only will be, the, the specification of 5G will be in 2020 of the consensus. Now, I think you set the requirement that they, they are all broken down. I think you call for submission. They will submit to ITU, then there will be evolution. They will have to form evolution group outside ITU and within ITU. And within that, I think some of the manufacturers already try to meet the requirement there. Yeah. But the specification not 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 finalized, not that. They have to in ITU to do consensus. Everybody has to agree on that because what you want only one standard. Intellectual property. Yeah, intellectual. When, when you come one standard, only you can have the phone this Your phone now you have 2G, 3G, 4G. When finalize the specification of 5G by 2020, ITU finalize this are uh, the recommendation only beneficial. But the beneficial won't start from beginning because they already have. What they have to do is to agree. 
among them, you know, uh, some to give you know, consensus. By 2020, only you can have that. That's why you can see the first commercial 5G will be in Tokyo. They were showcased in Olympic. So they said, no, 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 no 5G. Uh, now maybe you can see some of them have 5G in the trolley. They, they would have to demonstrate the big for me. They do have to demonstrate the what you call a throughput. They have to demonstrate the latency. For the technology to be able to get 4D, they have to be <coughs> this. That's why the evolution has to come in. Whether the latency one millisecond, if not one millisecond, out. If the throughput more than 10 giga, because some manufacturer can produce 20 giga based on that. Uh, is the latency throughput? Okay? Uh, this uh, the 10, of course, capacity. It has to be part of the standard for IoT as well. Similar to extension from maybe narrow band IoT from the GPP. So this will be, be, be one standard. Anybody can put it as long as you follow the link, you can come up with a device or something like that. And then there will be a phone with 5G there. If you are here, there's 5G, you can experience the 5G. But you go out, no 5G, you fall back to 4G, and that's what. It's similar to what we have now. The only thing is vertically, it involves healthcare, it involves automobile uh, industry, and all the becoming. Before you were talking about broadband only, but now you're talking not only that, you're talking about vertical. All together. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, for example, by 2020, if uh, nobody, nobody, because uh, somebody has met the requirement for all the family in a lab, can they? Can they they have to be submitted because ITU will call for submission of the those proposals will be submitted. I think who attended working party Friday, I think there is a process. You know, working party even three times a year and very you know you have input conclusion, you have any and so on. They have to submit they will, then they have to be, there will be only one single standard. Consensus. That's why maybe uh, that will take time. Huh? That will take time. No, so consensus has to be agreed during the. Exactly. Yeah. We have to get like hundred people to agree on the same standards, and they will be arguing till the yeah. cows come home. That, that's why normally working party by the two weeks, huh? Right? Only two weeks. There will be input already. Then, then, uh, what do uh, you call plenary and so on? And then they have to cut off. They have by 1920. They have have to agree everything. Have to be. After that, recommendation come out, specification come out. If they don't agree, they agree two set of standards, then uh, it's quite enough. Yeah. Okay. okay. <laughs> I, I give. I, I give you an example. I have that a question to uh, follow up. Question, but yeah, I, I want to say you one example in three G generation. First generation, there is country standard. They're not talking about what name. UK different standard. We use here tax system. Uh, NMT. Is the second enabling so We also use here ATO. Huh? And then we have AMS, US standard. Okay? Because, because that, that we have only the first standard. If we consider that country standard. There's no roaming. You cannot go to it. When you come to that's why when we move to second generation, even in Europe they have multiple standards. But when you come to second generation, they need to be one standard. Because the problem you from UK you go to Germany, you cannot be called no roaming. That they come with GSM. 4G got two standards. Huh? 4G, we have two standards. Uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I will come to that. I will come to that. Uh, before, then we, you can see that <coughs> the problem is this 2G. 2G is not, that's why 2G is not coordinated by ITU. Uh, GSM, European. Uh, first generation is basically country. Uh, the, the UK, their, their own, their, their, their. When it comes to European, they think that we need to have one European standard. That's why. They call group special mobile. Then later they change to global system for mobile communication, and they try to promote this as a global standard. You cannot because some country like Japan, they are different standard. But, but they are more successful second generation standard. Eighty more than eighty percent use GSM. That's why you can go to any country which have GSM. You can do roaming. You can you go to US. They cannot. Unless you will, that's why they create another one, GSM 1900. Because 900 and 1800, no more spectrum they use for that. 1900, there. then you go to the end, you can do a roaming with GSM 1900. 
You go to Japan in 2G, you cannot make it. They are using PDC. That's why we come to 3G. Since 3G, one thing of to support the broadband, uh, 2 megabit, I mean the multimedia as well. But they're talking about the global standard. That's why ITU come in. I was involved at that time during ITU to do that when you uh, go to see the process. Same part, that's, that's not they call task group as well. The process, it's very interesting to see the process of the generation. Uh, 3G, because one thing their requirement is to be backward compatible to 2G. That's why ITU one only one standard, but not possible. Uh, Europe different, US different. So they come up with, instead of one, they have five standards. But they are interoperable, all backward. So let's like, see like CDMA 2000, the US one, backward compatible to US. Uh, WCDMA that we are using is backward compatible to GSM. Japan, they join Europe, uh, WCDMA. They, they also have TDSCDMA, which is using TDD. But this one don't talk to each other. Uh, no, they, 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 they don't talk, but they, they have to get consensus, consensus, they have to, instead of one, there are more standard. But they have to be also to operate at a certain level. But usually, market will decide. Only three left. Uh, even the tax, huh? you, your European point is part of the standard accepted in ITU. Right? Because consensus, they have to agree. Be become free. TDS, CDMA, China using TDD in 3G. But since uh, China don't care, because <laughs> they are very large market, they want to go for, for the T TDD part. Huh? But WCDMA, because based GSM based, it works right. CDMA 2000 US, you see it there. But when you come to, uh, then along the way, YMAX come in 2004. By R triple E, four G. Yeah, they then they claim four G. Basically, no four G at that time. <laughs> all the British four G, yeah, four G. Then then that's why when you come to evolution of three G, when you come to LTE, actually basically not four G. LTE is three point nine G. <laughs> and uh, why make claim four G? Then when the LTE they have to change that to become four G. The true 4G is LTE one. That's why in 2010, again, ITU set another requirement for, for, for 4G, LTE uh, IMT advanced. Requirement of IMT advanced is 100, uh, 1 gigabit for low mobility. Meaning that if you are here, you access internet, it should be 1 gigabit. 100 megabit for high mobility. Meaning you are traveling fast train, 300 kilometer per hour. Your connection to internet has to be 100. That is the ITU requirement. The one that submitted for that, huh, when they open the same as so to mention that uh, LTE advanced release 10, submit for the day, and also 802.16M is evolution from YMAX. These are the two submitted. And these two meet that requirement. And these two become standard. Now 4G, that's why Mr. Toh said, 4G have two standard. LTA ones and and again you can see market will decide same as five left with now two with 4G I don't know maybe left with one <laughs> one max slowly you will see that's why they call LTE long term evolution or long term employment <laughs> <laughs> so there will because LTE will move further to 4G that's why you see really 17 can be that uh, they will see. So, okay. so uh, with uh, the existing <laughs> constraints that we have, uh, right, uh, between the telcos and, and whatnot, um, how can the country, the telcos, the, the stakeholders, you know, um, utilize the current constraints that we have to move and meet the demands of uh, 5G subscribers or consumers in the next two, three years? Yeah. Uh, that's why when you say 5G, they, they say that they have to look into new spectrum. We use all 2G, 3G, 4G, all below 6 gig. It's no more. Even your data LTE advance, you you have you you have to do carry aggregation because you need bandwidth. The uh, mission to the capacity. Right. The important here. That's why you need to have this. Why you put that? That's why you have to go there. Then one, why 2G up to 4G is here? 5G has to be somewhere there because you need spectrum. Uh, 28 giga, you, have, you can have 1 giga, gigahertz of bandwidth. So 800 megahertz of bandwidth, that's better. Mm -hmm. that, that's why we, we, the higher frequency, of course, you have more bandwidth, more spectrum. 
any research to reduce noise? Uh, yeah, I mean here, yeah, this one. Yeah. yeah. You see, when you, if you are here, say you are transmitting here, you are receiving here, there are two things that you are considering. You are talking not only uh, the signal, not only the coverage yeah, that you receive here, you are talking about sensitivity of the receiver as well. The most important is the this ratio. The signal, you, that's why I can say, Mr. Toh, that uh, narrowband IoT and normal uh, narrowband IoT using LT, LT and normal LTE. Okay? Why they reduce to 200 kilohertz? Because they reduce 200 kilohertz that the, the signal you receive from the base station the same. The free, they depend on frequency and depend on the distance. But it is your noise level, signal to noise ratio. If your your narrow band, that means your your noise level is pushed further. The gap will be bigger. That's why it can extend further. That's why narrow band IoT can go further. Okay, we we all that. Because right? yeah. uh, you know the noise level here determine if you K T B F K mean Boltzmann constant is same. B the bandwidth. The the wider the bandwidth, higher will the noise. When higher will the noise, your signal to noise ratio becomes smaller. Away there. Excuse okay. me, Bob. Uh, I need to put on my MC hat again. Yeah, yeah. So now it's no. uh, 410. <laughs> so I'm not sure how, how much longer do you need. I don't want to go by that. I can stay here. <laughs> 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 yeah, yeah. Uh, I think Even inter, uh, 
it is possible. The only thing is the agreement between the operator and the owner. Share the space of the more, 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 more resources. It is possible, technically it is possible. Even now, TDD and FDD can. Can the state government become that educator? Yeah. 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 The operator, I think, the service provider, so they assign to them as well. Unless uh, the regulator or the agency, you have to do it if you do not. Yes. But operator, everything can. That's what happens to some operators that they are sharing. And even the newcomer, uh, they are really fail because they, they, they have 5 4 g but for them, they want to implement 4 g Straight away, very difficult. So what they do, they do a smart money for roaming. Uh, some areas, you know. That is for this, that was for Google. But why we need this, we need this one. Uh, we need that integration is to make this. Understand? Uh, what I'm trying to relate to is what the current Chief Minister Sarawak is trying to do. Right? Um, he is pushing for digital economy for Sarawak. And one of, the, one of his key initiatives is to roll out 1,800 Elko Towers across Rawat, right? And they have an entity called Sakopa that already has something like a Telco license. So again, we have this, uh, and you know Sarawak when it comes to coverage and all, it, it's not any good, right? So um, in, in terms of, if we were to think uh, how we can help or advise them, how to uh, meet the mobile uh, broadband uh, demands to both urban and also rural areas in, in Sarawak. Uh, so is it possible if that entity that they have, that they have license, become the aggregator for the rest of the demo? Yeah, but I cannot comment on that because uh, not, not the but it's possible. It depends on the, 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 the what you call the uh, instruction from the but, but it is possible. It's it's possible. Uh, it can be if technically feasible then it's better than that. Yeah. 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 But I think it's possible. What what you need to have if all the, the license having the spectrum they can I think you're entitled to working more on the construction for such a large amount of construction. I think for such a point, that's one of the uh, encouragement that we need to share. Even the, the sharing of spectrum, I think we should have done that also. For example, operators and operators, they are mining, sharing the resources of that spectrum. Okay, on that fascinating note, uh, <laughs> so, um, actually career education can work, but it has to um, some concerted effort and some meeting of minds. That is the difficult bit. And some mechanism to measure your, your inputs. So uh, can we thank uh, Prof again?